We're back. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my hosts, co-hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Kelly. We've been going all day today at the uh, ECIR, Explorations in Cyber International Relations. This is an event, it's a workshop put on by, by MIT, uh, sponsored uh, by the Minerva Initiative, which is funded by the DOD. The topic today is cybersecurity and the governance gap, complexity, contention, and cooperation. And really, I mean, the questions that came up today, guys, were, were quite interesting. Um, you know, is the internet this, uh, uh, and, and security in the internet this big monolithic thing? Well, no. Uh, what's the future of the internet? We had the president of, of ICANN tell us that uh, the current model of you know, governance, oversight, whatever you want to call it, by the U.S. government with ICANN is not sustainable. Um, we heard that the pace of cyber development, cyberspace development, is going faster than international relations are able to keep up. International relations are essentially were, you know, configured around the industrial revolution, and now we've got the internet revolution, and a lot of things have to change. I, I have a feeling that, first of all, I think you know we're in the very early innings. Um, uh, one of our guests said we're on the, we're on the ten yard line, our own ten yard line. So long, long way to go. We heard uh, parallels drawn with between cyberspace and cybersecurity and and nuclear proliferation, uh, which uh, uh, when first when you first hear that you say, well, wait a minute, you know, nuclear bomb blowing up versus cyber. Well, but actually, there are similar dynamics. Uh, there's mutual destruction or mutual damage that can be done. Um, there's, there's, there are technological barriers, uh, but the big difference being there's much more ubiquity and, and, and just a distribution of resource that in expands the, uh, the, the space of the threat matrix. Uh, and we really heard that um, we don't know what the future holds uh, for the internet, but we do know that it's gonna be a, a, a multi-stakeholder uh, type of environment where the role of the US government is is somewhat moderated. Um, and that's gonna be uh, a, a big, hard, chewy transition because you can't just pull the plug overnight. Uh, there are legal issues, there are security issues, there are, there are to a certain extent governance issues that all need to be resolved. And we also heard that a middle ground is potentially emerging. The, the CEO of ICANN put forth the notion that, that countries like Brazil will actually help us uh, to get out of this problem of the perception of the U.S. government's heavy hand. And Brazil, because it's got strong technological infrastructure, it's got a large population, uh, it's, it's you know, generally in, in, in a place in the world that's not necessarily um, seen as adversarial to a lot of countries, so um, could be a good mediator. And the president of Brazil suggesting, hey, let's make this a multinational type of initiative. So, all kinds of interesting concepts put forth. I love coming to these events uh, because, you know, it's not a lot of you know, vendor marketing, and we tend to get that at a lot of the, the, the Cube events. These are some these are the events that we do for you, our audience. Uh, that we we just bring our team here. Uh, it's great content, and you know we want to share that with you. So really appreciate you guys watching and the, the tweets and the texts that we've been getting all day. So Jeff Kelly, I want to start with you. Um, you were in the morning session, uh, sat in with a number of uh, the CUBE guests, uh, along with uh, Charlie Sennett uh, of the Global Post. What's your take on the day today? Well, I think it's remarkable, uh, and I didn't quite realize how early in the game we are, and the complete lack of any kind of coherent, overarching um, approach to governance when it comes to security of cyberspace and the internet and the World Wide Web. Um, the fact that there are just you know a handful of governing bodies that don't necessarily uh, always um, see eye to eye on how to best govern uh, things like uh, security, um, you know, access to uh, the internet, um, hardware, uh, infrastructure uh, standards and things like that. Um, I think the biggest challenge uh, is going to be this transition, as you said, to a multi-stakeholder approach because you know, the, the current uh, governance structure is really reflects the priorities of U.S.-based corporations, uh, government entities, uh, and other U.S.-based um, actors. Uh, and it's very difficult, it seems to me, uh, to incent those actors to give up this control uh, for the betterment of uh, essentially the world of cyberspace. Uh, the way you're going to do that to some degree is going to be uh, by focusing, one, on uh, the potential um, commerce that can be done 
uh, throughout the world by US-based companies if they uh, really buy into this multilateral approach. Uh, but the other is, well, if we don't do it, what, what's the alternative? Uh, and one of the alternatives potentially is a fractured internet, um, which really stifles innovation, stifles um, you know, the commerce uh, that can go on around the world, and potentially impacts the bottom line of the Googles of the world. That should get their attention, I would think. Um, but it's going to take a long time. We're very early. And uh, to me, it doesn't seem like there's any coherent strategy among the different players about how to do this. Well, Stu, Stu one of the other things we heard, uh, that, and we've talked about this a lot in the Cube, is this whole notion of security being you know, network-centric, you know, shifting to a data-centric or even an application-centric model. Uh, we've heard that uh, for, a for a number of years. Uh, we also, big highlight of the day, David Clark, uh, one of the uh, inventors of TCP IP, right up your alley, Stu, it's an area that you cover very extensively. But this notion of, of, of the shift in network security, um, what's your take on all this? Yeah, so first I actually want to respond to what Jeff was saying. It, it's really interesting because if you we've heard uh, the CEO of ICANN talked about, you know, Brazil's helping with some of this multilateral discussions, but it took a while. At first, uh, Brazil didn't actually even want to meet with him, and he had to go through a lot of steps to get there. Um, you know, I've been involved in standards, and it's tough to get people involved. The people that are involved tend to be pretty passionate and very engaged, and that's the type of people that we saw here at this conference. Um, but, you know, it, it, we need more of those people that are dedicated to do that activity because for the most part too many people and too many companies and too many countries are just willing to just put their head in the sand and hope that somebody else will take care of this issue and these are some big gnarly issues that they're that they're t tackling with here so um, and Dave, if we pivot then to your question, um, you know, security has been one of those really high priority issues. Um, you know, we understand that people need to worry about security, um, but once again, they tend to, you know, just do the minimum to get by and they say, okay, you know, um, you know, I, I buy a product, I put something in place, or if I have an attack, I respond to it. Um, but, you know, too many companies haven't really gone out, done the assessment and really, uh, you know, understood what they need to fix their security environment. And, you know, this whole mindset of starting with the data, I, I think is a good trend and it, it has a completely different, um, you know, group of actors and budgets involved. So, you know, maybe that can, you know, start to really attack and address some of the security issues at, at a fundamental level. Well, the other thing, too, that strikes you at an uh, event like this is that the ramifications, uh, the, the geopolitical ramifications are, are enormous. So we like to think sometimes in our little technology sandbox, and the reality is that cyberspace has just so permeated every part of our life, whether it's com commerce, you know, national security, defense, uh, et cetera, that the decisions that are going to be made about who runs the internet, how it's structured, uh, not only will, will impact our industry and impact companies, but they'll impact you know, things of uh, national importance. Um, and so this is a big, big issue. Uh, the other observation I make is technology, you know, in a way, got us into this problem, but it's, in and of itself is not going to get us out of this problem. I think we talk a lot, uh, Jeff, especially at uh, big data conferences, about analytics as potentially helping with the security problem. We, we talked even today about open source models. Um, uh, all of these are wonderful. You know, we, we do Amazon reInvent, all they do is talk about security. EMC's talking about security, HP's talking about security, IBM, et cetera. All this money's being thrown at the security problem. Um, but at the end of the day, it's organizational, it's user behavior, it's governance, it's policy, uh, it's, it's it part technology, mm -hmm. you know, but maybe it's you know ten or twenty percent technology. Um, I wonder what your take is on that, Jeff and and, and and Stu, and where you guys see this whole thing going. And that when when we get to midfield, what's it going to look like? Well, I think you hit on an important challenge here, and that is, and, and we talked about this today, that policymakers don't necessarily understand some of the technology involved and don't always understand the implications of some of the decisions they might be making around security and governance. Um, so that's step one. I mean, when you've got a, a, you know, a set of policymakers that don't quite get it, um, there's, the, there's a couple things that could happen. One, they can make some, some rules and regulations and some governance decisions that you know, adversely impact um, a number of areas, or they could seek some control uh, you know, to the corporate world where they're going to make decisions based on their best interest. Um, so I think the real challenge here is at a very fundamental level, first is just kind of education. Um, we, we talked about how we just have to learn to speak the language. Policymakers need to learn to speak the language and vice versa of technologists. Um, that's a big gap just 
that in and of itself. Forget about actually making the decisions about uh, governance models. Um, so that's step one. Uh, you know, we clearly have a long way to go. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to get there. Um, I'm not alone in that. There's some really smart people at this conference who don't know either. Um, but that's why we're here trying to figure it out. Uh, but I think it's a good first step to actually try to bridge that gap among, you know, that the language barrier um, and try to educate policymakers as to what are some of the implications of this, these technologies and how they impact people's everyday real lives. Um, once we do that, then you can maybe take some next steps to, do, to organizing some governance principles. But until you can kind of get on the same page, um, it's very difficult to do that. And then, of course, we talked a little bit today, Stu, about the industrial internet, internet of things, um, internet of everything, as, as Cisco, Cisco calls it. This is, uh, again, it's, it's going to bring an order of magnitude of more complexity into the equation here. Um, what are you hearing in the base? You know, what are your thoughts on that? And, um, and I, I just want to go to you because I love the background of the credential. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the pretty shot with the crew behind me and everything, Dave. Um, I think on, on the Internet of Things, you know, it's too early for most of the base. You know, we, we, we've, you know, GE obviously is uh, do, doing some great things, pushing forth the vision uh, of, of what's happening there. Um, and, you know, we, we've done a lot of research on it, but it's, you, know, you talk about if we say we're on the 10 yard line here, I don't think we've even kicked off almost on the, the industrial internet. A lot of discussions about, uh, you know, where mobile is taking things, and obviously mobile's a little bit further than some of the smart devices that are out here overall. Um, but, you know, we, we've got a long way to go. Uh, you know, we think there is, you know, a large opportunity to uh, kind of build security in from a, not only a technology standpoint, from a policy standpoint. Um, you know, you talked many times today, Dave, about uh, how, you know, WikiLeaks and the, the Snowden uh, impact is making everybody really pay attention to it. So, uh, you know, maybe there's the opportunity for us to, you know, this spotlight on security uh, to allow it to, to move forward and actually make some progress because it, it seems we haven't made enough progress over the last few years. Well, I think that there are certainly a lot of historical parallels that you can draw on. Um, we heard this morning about, you know, parallels with, with uh, uh, you know, post Pearl Harbor, the pendulum swung more towards security, certainly post 9-11. You know, so there are, there are some, some, some constant frameworks that we can, we can you know, use for mental models. You know, what, what has changed and what's unpredictable is the, the impact of some of these developments. And, and you know, even though, again, technology is not going to get out of this problem, technology tends to get us into a lot of problems. <laughs> you know, data growth causes pro problems, you know, the whole, you know, security issue, or the, 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 the distributed computing cause, cause problems. You know, you look at, you know, cloud uh, creating, you know, well, bigger threat matrix. Come, come on, Dave, but from a technology yeah. standpoint, we said we can solve all those issues with technology. It's just the organization and the politics well, can, you know, solve all those issues. Right, Jeff? It's, well, you know, I, it's all you policy people and, you know. Well, uh, policy people is part of it, but any, tech, any new technology often brings un unintended consequences that you can't foresee. Um, you know, we, we talked to one of the essentially founders of, 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 of the internet today. Um, he, he didn't envision at all what the internet was going to become based on um, things like the number of devices that are going to be connected. So it, technology does get us into problems, but it's, it's also a way to get us out of problems, but it has to be applied in a smart way. And that's, that's the challenge. Well, so a lot of times we talk about the organizational implications. Um, you know, at the MIT uh, Chief Data Officer, you know, Information Quality Conference, we talked about the role of the Chief Data Officer. Do you need a Chief Data Officer? Should that individual report to the CIO? Should it be part of the CIO's function? Is it independent of the CIO? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are firm level decisions that have to be made. Now we're talking about the global implications. And, and the, the, the big concern is that organizations can set, if they're well run, they'll have objectives and they'll align people to those objectives. And you know, we all go through this. We've all worked at big companies, we've worked at small companies. We all know it, it works better when, when everybody's aligned. The hard part in this equation is getting everybody aligned. I mean, we heard today that you've got a situation where Deutsche Telekom is proposing you know, the German internet and the, the prime minister or president uh, of, 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 of Germany is, is actually listening. To do what you're talking about. Say, yeah, that makes make, make sense. We can. Well, if, we are, if you're hacking into her, her, you know, devices, of course she's going to want to create some our own little world of commerce. You can see China wanting its own, you know, root servers. You can see, you know, other countries tr trying to do the same thing. And so that essentially forks the internet, which maybe creates some short-term opportunities and even some long-term opportunities for the for those countries. But but those closed systems tend not to grow as fast. Innovation tends not to be as uh, as robust. 
and, and they, the, those, those types of structures tend not to be as, as agile, but you know, the big question is, is, is what that's, what's that gonna look like? Uh, is the US gonna, gonna, gonna cede control? Um, will things like root servers be more distributed, uh, you know, even though uh, you know, we heard the CEO of, of ICANN tell us, well, that's really you know, not the key issue, but it's certainly a perceived issue. What, what issues does that cause if people start you know, wrestling away those, those servers? So these are things that, that need to be you know, sorted out, and, and I guess events like this provide frameworks for forward progress. Well, and you got to keep in mind, everyone, all these different players, the, the government agencies, corporations, they've got competing interests. And even, and we've seen clearly with some of the revelation about the NSA, you know, the, the government, U.S. government and other actors in this um, play can, can be making certain statements on the surface, but are going to be also uh, covering their backsides with uh, other uh, things they're doing under the covers, if you will. So uh, this is, nothing is quite as it seems when you, when you start talking about international relations and uh, you know, cyber politics. Um, it's really going to be, uh, I think, a messy, messy experience over the next, you know, decades. Really, it's going to take a long time before we get to a point where we can say, oh yes, okay, we've got a, a fairly secure, comprehensive uh, governance regime overseeing the uh, overseeing cyberspace. Um, you know, that said. The, the, the real challenge, I think, is, or one of the real challenges, or maybe even paradox, is that the, the very power that the internet and, and cyberspace provides to um, innovators, to start new companies, to find ways to uh, you know, solve society's problems, that same power is what enables all these new types of threats. People, you know, one person can now really, you know, potentially take down a network uh, or really wreak havoc. Um, all due to the same power capabilities of the internet that allows the innovator uh, to do some really great things for society. So the question as you provide or, or implement governance is how do you encourage one while reducing the threat from the other? Um, and where do you find that balance? And again, that's a question that can only be answered once we're all speaking the same language and on the same page and we're not there yet either, so. Okay, so uh, this pretty much ends our coverage today. Next week, we're going to be at uh, Gillette Stadium. Stu, why don't you talk a little bit about that event? Uh, we're excited to be covering uh, some emerging virtualization trends beyond just VMware, including, but beyond VMware. Why yeah, yeah sure, Dave. That? So, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting to have, you know, an increased coverage in cloud. Uh, we, we obviously covered a lot of cloud shows last year, but uh, the first one for us is the VTUG, uh, which is the Virtualization Technology Users Group. Uh, it was uh, one of the early VMUGs, and uh, after VMUG became a corporation, they actually decided the VTUG here in New England uh, is that uh, they wanted to cover more than just VMware. So it's multi-hypervisor environments. Uh, so they have Citrix there, they've got Microsoft there, obviously VMware's still there. Uh, and we're also gonna talk about cloud a bunch. So Brad Anderson from Microsoft is one of the keynotes. We're gonna have him on. We're gonna have, uh, you know, hopefully some OpenStack coverage there. We're gonna have, uh, you know, some of the traditional virtualization players, including uh, storage and networking there. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a great event. One of the, uh, it was one of the largest VMUGs uh, usually in the world and as a standard alone event for a VTUG, uh, it sh you know really is looking to take it to be more of an industry event covering you know cloud and virtualization, and we're excited to bring the cube there uh, next Thursday. How big is that event going to be? Do we know yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's usually been you know thousand, two thousand people, so, so it's it, good it, size. It, it, it is big. Oh, now they're going to let the cameras in Gillette Stadium pass to be practicing for. Uh for the game, hopefully. So, uh, the, Dave, Dave, you know Bill Belichick. Are you <laughs> kidding? If we try to take a camera and show anything going on in the field, they will come and drag us out of there. <laughs> they so, have their own cameras. Yeah. So Turnabout is not fair play, evidently. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Well, listen, uh, Jeff Kelly, Stu uh thanks very much for uh, co-hosting with me today. Thanks to, to Charlie Sennett, uh, Alex Fischera, uh, and Andrew Lowe. Great job. And uh, obviously the whole crew, we really appreciate, you know, Kristen Nicole and Mark Hopkins. Awesome questions today. Um, check out his coverage on Bitcoin. We brought Bitcoin up several times today. It was interesting. Everybody knew what you know Bitcoin was. A lot. Some people had you know soft opinions. Uh, other people just sort of stayed away from the topic. But uh, it's clearly something that is relevant, uh, I think, to this whole discussion and uh, one that again tips the balance of power. It's another another dynamic in this uh, very hard to solve equation. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you. Next week, uh, look for uh, actually replays of, of this event. We'll be running them on uh, siliconangle.com and siliconangle TV. Check out wikibon.org for all the research, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.